What's everyone? Welcome to the Learn the Basics DocuLife webinar. If you're just getting started with DocuLife, this is a great one to watch over the next 30 minutes. We're going to be covering off on some great topics. We're going to cover off on uh, use cases for DocuLife first, so you can see uh, what other people are using DocuLife for, how to create a binder, how to create sections to further organize your stuff, how to add your things, create albums. Uh, we're going to show you how to make some awesome layouts how to invite contributors, and also how to use the browser extension. Uh, where possible, I will show you how to use uh, DocuLife on the mobile app as well. Uh, so stay tuned. we got a lot of fun things happening here in the next 30 minutes. So let's jump into it and see um, these use cases for DocuLife. So we'll put this guy away. All right. So <clears throat> here we have. Uh, a wedding use case example for wedding planning. DocuLife is perfect for wedding planning because it centrally organizes everything for you and then you can also take it with you on the go. So you can make sections for everything that you need to plan for your wedding. For instance, you can create a section for venues, a section for flowers, a section for dress uh, ideas, a section for uh, entertainment ideas, a section for all the stuff that you're going to have contracts for with catering, things like that. And you can have it all in one place. Not only that is that you can invite friends and family to help you plan. Um, and if you're using a wedding planner, perhaps they're inviting you to their own DocuLife and helping you uh, plan your wedding on DocuLife as well. So as you can see in this one here, we've got some awesome uh, milestones. So you can keep track of from a high level view of where you are um, as you approach your big day and what's left need, needed to do. Uh, this one is from a, a wedding planner. So they've invited someone to their um, wedding planning binder to help them plan their wedding. So here is that wedding planner's contact uh, information, but you could obviously uh, do this all yourself as well. So here they've got available venues. They've saved some websites using the Web Clipper bookmark um, extension there. They've got a reminder, so you can always see how many days are left to the big day. Um, we got some invitation ideas. Uh, dress samples. As you can see, some people have made comments so you can share it with, like I said, friends and family. So you've got your, your best um, best friend. They can make comments. You know, that looks amazing, that type of thing. Uh, flower ideas, cake ideas, entertainment. You can um, use, like again, use the web clipper to save uh, samples of video to see uh, if other people like the en entertainment as well. And then obviously you can uh, t take care of all the contracts and keep all those contracts centrally located and, and not have to search for them in email or anything like that. So really handy. And all this is accessible on your mobile device as well. So super handy that way. Another use case for DocuLife is to plan another type of event, maybe a little bit smaller, but uh, this is for an anniversary party that um, some of the parents' kids are planning, putting together for their parents' 50th wedding anniversary. So again, a little bit smaller of an event. DocuLife is perfect for planning any size event, large or small. Uh, it essentially organizes everything for you. So really, I mean, if you're just planning a birthday party with friends for like, you know, five to 10 friends, or if you're planning a big wedding with like 200, 500 guests, it's perfect for either size uh, of event. Here, they've got a checklist. So they've got some to-dos still here to achieve. So you can keep track that way. Some catering ideas, a venue idea here in Florida. You, got a, uh, you can even put in a map of uh, the location, uh, some entertainment ideas here. We've got a cellist video. And uh, this is really cool is that you can drop a conversation widget in any section that you would like and have a conversation about the contents in that uh, section. So here we've got a uh, conversation widget here that no one's uh, used yet. Um, however, it's right next to these two videos. So we could have a conversation specifically about these two videos in general in this entertainment section. So people could put their ideas about type of entertainment that they would like, or if they like or dislike what we have here. Really fun. Um, people could add their own <clears throat> photos. So you could invite people to the binder that are coming to the event, and they could upload their own memories of um, the parents over the years. And then you can make this amazing slideshow using DocuLife to play at the event. Um, and you know everyone will be just blown away by all these amazing uh, photos through the years. So really fun way to do that as well some invitation ideas, um, flowers, and again, all the guest lists, um, all the stuff that you would think would become with a uh, party. So we got uh, tents if you're having an outdoor event, gifts, types of gifts you could give, uh, playlists even for music. Um, 
you put ideas here as well if you're not going to have your own entertainment option or maybe you want to have something before and after uh, when people arrive and are, are sort of leaving um, but a great way to use DocuLife to plan any size event. Another one is to organize photos and share awesome photo albums. So here's a photo album of kids' baseball photos. And DocuLife has this awesome thing called theater mode so that uh, the it will take over sort of most of the screen here, which is really fun. And then you can kind of go through the um, slideshow here. And you can even rearrange things on the bottom here just by drag and drop. And then you can also, there's a handy toolbar if you hover over the photo, you can add uh, comments right on the side here about this particular photo. You can leave comments, you can uh, like it by just clicking the heart right there. You, if the image comes in um, rotated incorrectly, because sometimes we know with the phones, they get a little confused as if it's landscape or portrait, you can quickly and easily rotate that image right here. You can find out all the information about it, the title, if there's a description, all kinds of fun metadata stuff. You can download it, print it, and then also delete it if you have those particular privileges. So really, again, a fun way to use DocuLife is to make this really cool immersive slideshow. And if you just want to close this panel, just re-click on whatever the icon is highlighted, and it will go away. So really cool. All right, another use case is uh, if you've got a rental property and you want to make a guest information hub, they're coming to stay at your rental property like an Airbnb or, or a Verbo and um, you just want to have one central hub location to have all the information about your rental property so that the guests can access it from wherever they are. I mean, usually when you go to a hotel room, you get this nice three-ring binder that you can't leave the room with, right? As soon as you leave the room, you have nothing with you about uh, where to go to eat or, or uh, things to see and do. Um, but in this case, everything that the guest would need to know is right here. We've got contact details, check-in, check-out information, how to get there from uh, various transportation hubs like train and uh, airport. This rental happens to be in France, so there's a lot of uh, public transport available. Um, basic rules for the property, just using some uh, handy notes, quick notes that you can write up. Instruction manuals, how to use Wi-Fi, how to use the alarm system if there is one, appliances, things like that. A additional services if you need them, um, cleaning, dry cleaning, uh, things like that. And then, uh, you know, lots of things to do in the area. So one thing that's great, I think, as a, as a host for a rental property is to be able to provide um, yourself as a local knowledge expert and not only give the guest information about where they're staying, but give, give them information about the local activities that they could do in that area as well. And it really enhances their overall experience and the fact that they can take it all with them on their phone and access it and contact um, the rental owner, if they have any questions, is super handy and will only result in awesome rate host ratings for you. So another great use case for DocuLife. Uh, organizing all of your house documentation for um, home insurance purposes. So here we've got uh, a binder that's full of everything about uh, this person's house. So they've got all their home warranties, all of their, um, so the, the roof um, wind mitigation report, um, photos of the property in case anything happens to it. They can see that the damage was done during that particular storm and wasn't there existing. So you could take pictures of your house and have them here for your insurance agent. And again, all the stuff that you need to know about the house as far as warranties, HVAC warranties, things like that are all here. And at the bottom, we've got our insurance contact. So if we had anything ever happened, we could access, we can instantly contact our insurance agent right from um, our phone because we've got all this documentation with you. Think about like these wildfires that have been happening in the state of California or even in um, last year in, in the beginning of the year in Australia that destroyed so many people's homes. They would have lost all of this documentation and uh, to be able to have it centrally located. And if you've lost your entire home, you can easily still have all of this information on your phone to be able to contact whoever you need to. So it's a, a great um, way to be able to back everything up and still have access to it, even if the, the worst should happen tornado, hurricane, things like that. Um, and again, lastly, we've got the uh, property photos here. So again, you can um, see them in a, in a nice slideshow. So again, a perfect use case uh, for DocuLife is organizing everything about your house, whether you rent or own. Uh, it's a great idea to do. And then lastly is uh, this family memories. So again, a great way to be able to organize photos if you're on your phone, a um, great way to upload from your camera roll, sort of declutter that camera roll and make an awesome family memories binder. 
um, about your family and just kind of, you know, all together. And this is stuff that you can share with friends and family and they could um, come in as a contributor and be able to provide their own photos as well. So you end up with this amazing binder that's not only filled with your own memories, but also your family and friends memories as well. So really great way to use um, DocuLife. All right. So let's get into DocuLife. And um, now that you've seen some awesome use case examples, let's go ahead and, and see how you can do it yourself. So next, we're going to take a look at how to uh, create a binder. And I'm going to make this um, a little bit bigger here for everyone. All right, there we go. So when you first log on to DocuLife, and um, I should probably do this on my phone too. All right, let me just uh, log out of this here. I should have done this before, but it's OK. All right, so if we log in on the phone as well. It's really uh, when you have a long email address, this is the moments where you're like, oh. <laughs> Oh uh, boy, thanks for sticking with it here, but it's gonna be worth it when you see it um, up and running. All right, just logging in here. All right, so here we're actually gonna stop this and then put it back to desktop so that you can see everything here. All right, and we'll share this. There we go. All right. And here we go. OK, so now we've got these side by side. You can see them here. And you can see that uh, we're in the same uh, binder because we don't have any binders yet. So I'm going to create one on the phone. So you create a binder on mobile. This blue plus button in the lower right-hand corner is going to be your friend on both desktop and mobile. If we go look at desktop, you can see that there's a blue plus, plus button here. There's a blue plus button here. And then you've got it in the lower right-hand corner on the mobile phone. That's sort of your central location to originate anything new, whether you want to invite someone, create a new section, add content, create a new widget. It all comes down to this blue plus button. Um, and that will have all the options available to you. So on mobile, we're going to press this. And it's going to ask us to create a new binder. And uh, we'll call this my faves. So we'll create that. All right, and it'll put you right into the binder. And as you can see, it created it instantly on desktop as well. So really helpful there. All right, and then if you are on a mobile phone and to be able to add things on mobile, and we'll click into the binder here as well on desktop, so we have the same view, you're just gonna go ahead and click this uh, plus button again. And as you can see here, both of these, we can, um, on mobile, we have the opportunity to browse our files. So, uh, so I think it was iOS 10 or 11, you could access the file browser. So if you've got things saved in iCloud, you can access them through there. You can add a section. You can access your photo library. You can take a photo, or you can invite contributors. And then you can also create these particular widgets on mobile. On desktop, you have a little bit more options. You can upload, you can uh, create a note uh, at a location. And there's a few extra widgets on here that uh, we don't have <clears throat> on mobile, but that's OK. Um, excuse me, losing my voice. All right, so if we open this up, you'll also have access to all of your widgets here. Um, import email as well. We'll go over that uh, next week in the advanced, um, in the advanced webinar. But for today, we're going to concentrate on this particular window right here. And so on mobile, I'm going to close this out. And we're going to upload stuff via desktop at the moment. And that just is only because that just happens to be where I have everything saved for this particular demo. All right. OK, so we're going to upload a bunch of stuff. And looking at the upload modal here, you'll see that there's a few fields. So if we have a section or an album already created, it'll be listed here in, the, in these first two fields. If we don't. Uh, we can create them on the fly. 
if that, and that's what's great about DocuLife is I wouldn't need to close out this window, create a section, and then come back to it. You could do it right from here. So for instance, if I created, uh, wanted to create the section, my faves, you'll know that there's not, hasn't, there's no section that exists right now. And so you want to add my faves. So you just click that and DocuLife will create that section for you. And then whatever you upload will go instantly into that particular section. So let's go ahead and, and click to upload. A, uh, I'm going to drag and drop actually from over here. I'm going to upload a bunch of stuff. You'll see it over here on the right hand side. If you op click the plus button, you can see everything individually. And you can also close this window out while it's uploading. You can see it continues over here. And, you, and when it's done, it'll pop this uh, sort of summary report card here. It tells me exactly how many items were uploaded, the time it took, things I've uploaded, things like that. So um, easy there. All right, let's close this out. And you can see that all these objects are now uploaded into the section, my faves, that was created on the fly through the upload window. So really cool, right? So another way to create sections here is if you hover over the section bar. So let's talk about this section bar because there's some really cool things on here that you can do that are super handy. So to create a section above or below the current section, you can just easily click here or here. If you wanted to add uh, anything into this particular section, directly, you can just click on this. And uh, if you create a, a widget, you'll see that it's it's defaulted to that particular section already for you. So that's super handy. All right, and then we can download the, the contents of the section. So if you click that, it'll only download the contents of that particular section. You can change the default color of the section toolbar, the section bar rather, if you wanted to make it red, you can make it red, and we'll just change the red. We can rearrange sections. We'll take a look at that in a second. You can um, move or copy a section. So this is great if you've got a bunch of stuff in a section that you've already gone and added things to and you need it to use it somewhere else. Whether you want to make a duplicate of it or uh, move it from one binder to another, these are the two operations that can, you can use. So you can move or copy an entire section and its contents between binders just using these two handy little tools right here. So super useful to be able to move content around DocuLife without needing to download, re-upload it again. Super handy. Um, you can add a section description. So if we add a section description, that'll appear right here. Uh, check out my latest favorite photos. All right. So that's a section description. And DocuLife, as soon as you defocus any field, will save stuff for you. So there, we don't use a lot of like save buttons, and that helps clean up the user interface a little bit. And so as soon as you, what I mean by defocus is if you click anywhere else on this page, the moment you do that, DocuLife will save whatever you've just entered. So this um, is a really handy way to be able to just type and then keep working without having to do extra clicks and taps. Uh, okay, then you can delete the section, you can minimize the section. So if you do that, it'll just um, roll it up into a window shade and only display the title and description. But if you want to expand it again, simply click that plus button and it'll all reappear. I'm going to expand this out a little bit here just so we can get that fourth column. And you can also favorite a section as well. So on the application here, if we go back out, <clears throat> excuse me, and then back in again, you'll see that the um, everything is being updated now uh, to reflect exactly what is happening on desktop. So on desktop, there are a, a couple views here. And the current view that we have is uh, in card view. Now, in card view, what will happen is that it will show the exact size of everything. So you'll see the entire uh, contents of everything, no matter what the length is. So as you can see, we've got some varying lengths here. Some pictures are taller than others. Um, and so you get this kind of what's called a masonry grid. If you like things to be a little bit neater and tighter, you can choose this middle option, which is grid view, and that'll put everything in the same size box. Now, a note to people who may be concerned seeing their photos get cropped, we're not physically cropping your photos, it's only visually. So if you were to open up, say, this photo, you could still see the full uh, portrait vertical photo. It's just visually cropping it into a nice, neat square to kind of tidy up the, the um, view for you. Um, but again, if you wanted to see the whole object at a glance, just use card view and it will show the entire uh, object. All right, so we're gonna, we have a bunch of stuff in these two sections here. And as you can see on mobile, we've got everything in that section as well. 
All right, and it also is reflecting that we've changed the color of the section bar to red as well, so my fave, so really cool there. All right, so we're going to move some of this stuff into a, uh, another section. So um, you can see there's some gear photos, there's some on location stuff. So what I'm gonna do is select the gear photos only right now. So hover over the card and you'll see that there is a disc in the top right hand corner there that at, it, um, is the selector. And when you do select it, you'll see that you get this multifunction menu that comes down from the top. And so I'm gonna select all the gear photos then I'll talk about that particular uh, menu there. Let's see, we got one here. Oop, click that one. All right, we got this one, this one, and they can look around my microphone. I think that's it. Okay, so now we want to move these uh, to a different section. So we're going to click move because we've got move, copy, add to album. So again, you can add things to an album on the fly. Even if it's not created, you can create one on the fly just by clicking Add to Album. You can rotate left or right. You can download whatever you've selected. You can hide whatever you've selected if you don't need to see it that often. You can delete it. Or if you click Close, it'll close this menu and then deselect everything you've selected. So right now, we're going to move to a different section. So let's click on Move. And now you can see we only have the one section called My Faves, right? So we want to add a section. So we're going to click that button. And we're going to call it gear. And after you type it in, hit return so that the section does get created. And then we'll select it. And uh, when it's selected, <clears throat> you'll see it's got a green check mark there. And then we just click move here. So again, on the fly, we've created this section that we need. We don't have to close this modal out, create the section, and then come back. We have the ability to create things on the fly as we go. So we'll click move there. And it should take those photos out. And it will scroll down you'll see that that section has been created and those photos have been added. And as you see, this lens photo here is rotated incorrectly. So if we click that, you'll get that menu again and we can simply rotate it left. And there you go, now it's correct, collect, correctly rotated. That's a tough one to say. Okay, and then lastly, we've got some on location shots and we wanna put those in their own section as well. So we're gonna, just select those options here. I think there's only three of these. Yep. All right, and then we're gonna move those again and we're gonna add a section. You know what, let's uh, close this out and we're gonna use the other method. We're gonna use this method to create a section. So I'm gonna click add section here. You'll see that there is a new section that just got created below this one. And we're gonna call this on location. The multiple ways to do the same thing depending on what you're doing at that particular time, right? And as you can see, these are still selected up here. So we haven't lost any work that we've done. And now if we click move again, you'll see that that new section is there. So a really cool way that, that there's different ways to do the same thing in DocuLife. So we'll click, click on location. We'll see it selected with the green check mark. And then we'll click move here. And those should get pushed down to the bottom. There we go. So really cool. All right, so if we switch over to grid view, I'm going to show you some neat things that will make some awesome layouts uh, for the website. On the mobile app, the mobile app is a single column. So it's a little hard to do really fun layouts when there's only a single column on um, mobile. But we do that so that you can see the object nice and big. If we had two columns on here, uh, things would be much smaller. And you'd have to open everything to see it all. So we keep things one column on here so you can see it nice and big without, without needing to open it unless you need to edit something on that particular thing like a, a name or something like that. So there are different op options on here if you long press on things. For instance, I'm gonna long press on this picture of this bird head and we'll see the options that come up. You can hide it, rename it, or delete it. And then also on the section itself, if you long press on the section itself, you'll see that we can add a section above, below. We can rename the section or we can remove the section. And remember, anything you do in the app is going to get reflected on desktop. So if I add a section above here, for instance, <clears throat> I'm going to give it a name. We'll just call this test. Just be quick about it. We'll add that section in there. You'll see that it instantly appears on desktop as well as test. So anything that you do on the mobile app uh, will be reflected on uh, desktop. And um, in order to see changes that you've done on desktop in the mobile app, all you have to do is kind of go back out 
<clears throat> and then back in again, and you can see that lens photo is now rotated um, that we had just done on previously on desktop. So really cool there. All right. So let's go ahead and long press on that section again, and we're going to remove that section, that one that we just created. It'll uh, confirm, confirm. All right, and that test section is gone, and you can see it get removed from the application as well as desktop at the same time. Really fun. Okay, and then <clears throat> as you can see on the left-hand sidebar here, we've got our conversation panel uh, for this particular binder. So if I wanted to leave a comment here, Hey, these uh, photos are awesome. Thanks for sharing. Imagine I'm a contributor here, not the owner of the binder, and I'm leaving a comment. You can even add an emoji here by clicking on the smiley face to get that uh, open window there, and we're going to leave a heart. All right, then we can just click Enter, and you'll see that comment come up. Now, on mobile, if you look down on the bottom, you'll see that there is a toolbar, and on the left-hand side, you've got this sort of chat icon. And that is the same conversation that we're just having right now on the left-hand sidebar. So if we tap that, you'll see the uh, comment that I just left. Hey, these photos are awesome. Thanks for sharing. And you could um, instantly reply from within the app, too. So say someone is looking at this on desktop. You're out and about on your app. You get notified you have a new comment. You can instantly leave a reply uh, right from your phone right here. And you can do a quick reaction, which is just um, tapping on the um, comment itself, and you can choose an emoji. It's giving me the edit option because I wrote the comment. <laughs> if I didn't write the comment, it wouldn't have that option in there. But you can leave a quick thumbs up, a thumbs down, uh, a fist bump, um, bicep for strong. We got cool shades. And then uh, that last one uh, looks like he's not feeling too good. <laughs> or to do a quick reply as well, you can instantly just use one of these thumbs up, thumbs down, down here, and uh, it will that will um, get used as well. So as you can see, we just left a quick uh, reply there with the uh, thumbs up. There we go. All right. So let's go back to the binder itself. Whew, lots of notifications here. All right. So really fun stuff. So on desktop, though, if you want to make a, a cool layout, let's take a look at that. And I think grid view, you could do this in card view as well. But grid view is really fun. Uh, way and you can really make an interesting layout literally in seconds. So um, I wish I had a timer on my screen, but uh, if we did, you'd be able to uh, see this in just a matter of seconds. So as you hover over, as we did before, you'll see that there's not only the selector circle, but you'll see that there's a three dot menu right here on the right hand side. If you click that, you'll get some extra options for this particular image. So we can hide it, delete it, we can pin it to the top of the section, we can download it, or we can add it to an album. But what I want to show, show you is this grid right here. So right now, this object uh, takes up one row and one column space. So it's just a little square, as you can see in this diagram. If we wanted to make this tall, we can make it expand two rows and one column width just by dragging our mouse around this grid right here. So I'm going to make this vertical, and I'm going to make it span two rows. And just like that, it'll span two rows that easy. So it's really easy to use this little layout uh, tool to make some really interesting layouts here. So uh, Mr. Spinks will do uh, too high as well. This guy looks really good too high because he's a vertical pitcher as well. Look around my microphone here. All right. Um, this one lo will look good at too wide. And as you can see, DocuLife auto shifts the layout. <clears throat> and quickly, as you can see here, we're, we're quickly making a very interesting uh, layout with very few um, clicks. So this what was literally less than <clears throat> less than a second or less than 30 seconds, rather less than a second, less than 30 seconds here. And we've got this very um, interesting layout as well. And we can um, pin this to top just to show you what that does. This will instantly go to the top of the section as being the most important thing. Everything rearranges into this nice tight grid. And we got a really fun layout here, less than 30 seconds. So a really fun way to do things. I, um, but again, on the phone, it's only going to be one column. So everything will appear the same on the phone. Uh, the last view that we have here is list view. And list view allows you to do some bulk options here. So list view looks more like the file system that you might be useful. So DocuLife is visual first, because we really feel like visually, uh, we can remember things a lot better than we can remember 
file names like this, right? If I wanted to find a picture in my file system and all the file had the same, the same sort of naming convention, it would be really difficult to remember all this stuff. I'd have to sort of preview every image in a, an open window to find the one I'm looking for when all I really need to do is look at it in grid or card view and I can really easily quickly find what I need um, to access. And this is, goes for documents as well because we, we know what stuff looks like, right? And it's really easy to be able to instantly recognize that we're visual people by nature. We're not verbal pe people by nature. We like language, but we don't like um, looking at it and having to remember complex details like file names. It's much easier to remember. It's the picture with the guy and the sunset and the surfboard than it is to remember uh, what his file name is called, which is very technical photo dash one five one nine seven eight nine nine etc. So this is really difficult to remember, and this is much easier to remember visually. So DocuLife is really visually oriented, so that you can find things quick by what they look like rather than what they're named. Um, where their naming might come into effect when you've got a bunch of versions of the same thing, and you've got underscore final underscore final underscore this is the actual final dot PDF. <laughs> then you really need to know the the final 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 file name in that instance. But um, other than that, you can just look for things visually and they're really easy to find that way versus trying to remember what the heck it's called. All right, so let's go back to our presentation here and see where we're at in uh, our discussion. Okay, so we've what is Doculi for? We've created a binder, we added some sections, we added some things. Well, let's make an album. And I talked about layout tips and we can go over inviting a contributor and talk about the browser extension. All right. So if I wanted to put some of these into an album, for instance, uh, gear here, if I wanted to um, put these into an album, because maybe I have different types of gear and I want to be, uh, I wanted to categorize it, you know? So we can just select the things that we want to put into an album, and then we can click add to album. And you can create one on the fly. You don't have to create the widget, the album widget first, and then add things to it. You could do that if you would like, but selecting things and then creating album on the fly is just as easy because we let you create an album on the fly. So we're gonna do this on uh, photo gear. Maybe I have one for video gear and I, I know I have a video camera in this one, but that's okay just for learning purposes. So we got photo gear. We're gonna click um, return. So it creates the album. Then we're gonna click add to album. All right, and then we'll close that we get a a little confirmation here at the bottom that the widget was successfully created. So we scroll to the top here and we see it here and we can move it down into, because I just created it on the fly, didn't know that I wanted it in that particular section and just put it at the top of the page. We're just gonna move it back down to gear. For instance, um, this is and this is really handy though, if, if you wanted it to be created within gear, you can just click this plus button here and then select album and <clears throat> it will automatically put it in that particular section. Um, so there's that method as well. And I, as you can see, it just created it because I created one. So let's go ahead and delete this right here. This little test album there. So we'll delete it from all binders, even though it's only in this one. All right, so let's modify this. So in order to modify this, if we click it, we'll view it. But to modify it, we use the action menu in the top right-hand corner and we can select modify. And that will open that familiar album modal that we just saw. All right, so this has some um, picks in it, which is pretty cool. So what DocuLife does is that <clears throat> it scans the photos that you upload, kind of like when you upload photos uh, to Apple or Google, it does facial recognition and it puts like photos together, right? Um, and it'll say, hey, check out all the photos of these particular people and it will organize them by a person, just by through facial recognition. Well, DocuLife scans the photos in a similar fashion, but instead of organizing them into groups, we apply tags. So when I um, added these photos, DocuLife scanned them and applied these specific tags to these photos. So these tags already exist. I didn't have to create them at all. So it saw a cell phone, uh, a train, and a TV. I'm not seeing a train here, but maybe it thought this was a train right here on this, on this particular photo. So it's it's pretty accurate and, and we'll create some uh, great tags for you. If you wanna get rid of it, you can just click that little X and it'll go away. You can add a description to your album here. 
Here's all the photo gear. And then if we want to add additional photos or set an al album uh, cover here, we can add a, add a thumbnail. So we'll just set as album cover, and that will become the cover of the album. If we wanted to add additional things, we just click this Add to Album. And it'll pick up everything um, that's currently in that binder. But if you wanted to upload more stuff, you could actually just click on Upload, and you can add things right on the fly here. Uh, into this directly into this particular album. So for instance, uh, say I wanted to add this guy right here, which I think is on location, but he's got a cool camera. So we can um, select this one right here and click add to album and that will get added as an additional photo. So really cool. If we if there's something in here that we don't want in here, again, you can select it and you'll get a remove option at the top. And I think we can also rotate things, and you can also remove it from the action menu as well. So again, multiple uh, ways to do things. If you have a, a few photos that you want to get rid of all at the same time, you can multi-select them and then click remove instead of doing them each individually. Um, so really handy. So now we've got this cool album here. And if you close this out <clears throat> and we refresh this page, that thumbnail should get updated to the uh, thumbnail that we chose within the album itself. Let me scroll down. Huh, that's interesting. Did not take. So let's open this up again. Set Alice album cover. There we go. All right. Close this out again. Huh, interesting. Let's take a look at that. All right. So we've created an album here. And if we look at our phone again, <clears throat> if we go back out and uh, click into here, if we scroll down into that gear section. Oop, on location. Oop, here, let me pull down at the top here to refresh. There we go. Not put that in here yet. It's interesting. Let's see, refresh here. There we go. So there's that album that we just created and um, added that photo to called Photo Gear. And if you look at it on mobile, it has a little bit different. So it kind of shows you the gallery first that you're going to see. And then you can just tap right in and see any of the photos here. If you tap the photo itself, you can set it as the album cover. You can rotate it left or right, or you could remove it. So again, you know, you can kind of rotate this around on the fly if you've uploaded uh, pics from your phone. And some of them are, are misrotated. You can actually do it right here. Or you could set this as the album cover if you would like, or remove it from the album itself. So really cool, right? You can add things here on the fly as well. Can take photo or add more from your photo library. Um, you can select multiple things just by tapping one, two, three, just like you would in uh, your photo uh, album on iOS. And you can tap to remove multiple photos at a single time. So really handy, right? All right, so now we're back out here. All right, so now let's invite a contributor because everything is more fun when uh, people are invited. So on desktop, as you can see, we've got this large invite people. Uh, button at the top. If we click that, we'll get the invitation modal. There's a few ways to invite people. You can search for them, but if you're new to DocuLife, most likely you're not going to have any contacts yet. So you can invite them. Uh, I already have these two um, people that I've invented as contacts in this particular binder, but I'm going to send a new email to someone else here. Just type in, and as you can see, when we create a section or album that hasn't been created yet, you can see that we also have this person here hasn't been invited to DocuLife yet. And so DocuLife knows that when you type their email address and it's asking you to invite to DocuLife. So I could click this and invite them to DocuLife, and they'll get added here as an email address. <clears throat> now there is different user roles, and we'll talk more about those next week. But basically, you could have a read download only an editor that allows you to upload. This person can then upload and change uh, my own things or their, add their own things. 
or they can be an admin where they can also um, invite people as well. So editor and admin are really for people that you know uh, and trust, read, download, or people that are more like acquaintances. You don't want them to mess up um, stuff that you've added, delete things, add their own things. All they can do is consume and download. Um, you can also add a note here so they know it's from you and personalize it. Hey, check out my favorite photos. And this will get included in the email that goes to this person inviting them to the platform. So I'm going to hit send invitation now. And it, this will automatically get um, over to the invitation sent tab. And you can see who uh, sent the invitation in case you've got admins in your binder. You can see who sent, who's inviting people, their role, the date uh, that expires because these aren't uh, I think they're for about 28 days they last, the invitations, and then they expire. They're not infinite. Um, and then also you could um, revoke the invitation or just copy the link. Say that person hasn't responded and you want to send them uh, a note from your own email or throw it into a chat window. You can easily copy uh, the link right here, and uh, it will copy that and then uh, paste it in any program you'd like. They click on it and then come to Doculite. And then for people who are accepted in the binder, I'm the owner here, John Appleseed, so it shows me as owner. But when this person accepts the invitation, they'll also show up here. You can see the role here, and you can also edit that role later on um, for whatever reason. And you can invite people. On mobile, it's also very uh, straightforward. So let's take a look at that there. As you see on the top of the, the binder itself, it says invite contributors. You can also click the plus button, and it also has an invite contributors option here as well. So multiple ways to be able to do that. And the process is the same. You'd enter their email. You'd select um, a user role, read, download, editor, or admin. You can then, as soon as you um, enter their email address, the send invite link will turn blue. Or you can copy this link right from here. So if we copy this link, they'll have editor privileges, and then you can just paste this link into uh, a chat application if you would like. So on desktop, we can do that as well. For instance, if we hit invite people again <clears throat> and we go to select contacts, you can see that there is a quick link here that we can copy with editor privileges and then paste that into a chat. For, for instance, if you're already chatting with someone on a different application, you can be like, hey, come to Doculife. Here's a quick link. And they can just tap it, boom, and then come over to the platform. So the email they get is going to look uh, something like this here. Um, here's the uh, note that this person has wrote. Hey, let's plan a trip together. You've received a cab collaboration from me uh, to their Paris trip binder on DocuLife, and they just click this, and they'll be brought over to DocuLife, or you can grab the application, um, sign in, and uh, away you go. So really handy. When you do sign up, you'll get this really handy uh, welcome email. Um, I really encourage you to play this video because it'll kind of give you a quick overview of the use cases for DocuLife and all the cool things it can do. We've got an awesome note from our awesome CEO, Dave, here. And then also some helpful links on the bottom of how to get started and some support requests, things like that, all in that welcome email. So really check that out when you get it. It's super handy to know how to get a hold of us and also give you a quick overview of the things that you can do in DocuLife itself. So that said, um, if you're new to the platform and it, <clears throat> Check out these binders in the left-hand side. Getting started has some really handy uh, getting started tips for both mobile and desktop. Um, organized here, so really, really awesome information. If you have any questions, links to videos, and these will uh, show right within DocuLife, so you don't even have to go anywhere else to view this particular information. It'll show right in DocuLife. You don't even have to, to leave the platform. And you can watch these helpful tutorial videos as well. So really handy to get started there. All right. So lastly, what I want to show you today is how to use the Web Clipper. So Web Clipper is something that's really handy. If you're a Pinterest user, you're already very familiar with this. It's saving content from the web as you browse. So you can save images, videos, website bookmarks, uh, website links, and also create notes by highlighting any text in any web page right on the fly. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so first, I'm going <clears> to <throat> sort of remove it from my own platform here so that uh, I can install it with you guys and show you how to do that. So I'm going to turn this off and then remove. 
All right, so then we're going to go to uh, Chrome extensions. And just type in Doculife at the top. And you can do this for Firefox or Chrome. So on Firefox, you would type in Firefox add-ons. In Chrome, you would type Chrome extensions, and you would come to the store. Just type in Doculife to search, and we'll show up. So here we are on Chrome. And it's really easy to install. All you have to do is click Add to Chrome. Add extension. And then it'll be installing. If you're not logged into Doculife, it will ask you to log in right here. But we are already logged in, so we should be good to go. All right, I'm going to unpin uh, this guy here and pin Doculife. All right. So let's go to a website here called DP Review. And this is a camera website. So we can add new stuff to our cool camera binder. We'll go to the Reviews tab. All right, so now if I right click on this page here, you'll see that the DocuLife extension is here. And if I go over to the right hand side, it'll say that I've got the option to save a bookmark for this page. And it'll list out every binder that I have in DocuLife. Currently, I only have one in our, in our account today that we were just looking at. We've got my faves. So we're going to bookmark this into my faves. So let's go back and take a look at this now. And look at that, it's already there. That's really cool, right? And on uh, the phone here, let's sort of come out of here and we can refresh. As you can see, I've got an invitation here for something. Yep, my faves. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and punch back in here to my faves. And there is that uh, bookmark that we just bookmarked on mobile as well. And so on mobile, if you click this, you'll be able to view it in app right in the uh, application uh, version of the browser. You don't even leave DocuLife. You can look at the web page. And as you can see here, it's giving us the mobile version on mobile and the desktop version on desktop. Really handy, right? And so we're still in the DocuLife app. So if I click back right here, you'll see that we're still right here in the application. So super handy, right? So let's keep going and go back to our camera review website and see what else the extension does. So really handy to be able to right click on things. So if you just click on sort of in the gutter of a page, the only option will be bookmark because it's sort of object aware of where you're clicking. So if I were to click on this link, however, I'd get a new option that says add a bookmark or a target. And a target is the destination that the link goes to, not the page that I'm currently on. So if I had add a target for this particular buying guide, You'll see that when we go back to my faves, it'll pop in here in a moment, and you'll see that it'll be the page that the link goes to, not the page that we are on, which is this bookmark page right here. So there you go. As you can see, the page is already looking different as it comes in here, and it's got that buying guide full page. So you don't even have to go to the actual page in order to save a bookmark on it. That's going to be called save target. So really cool, right? We didn't even go to this page. We just right clicked on the link. And instead of bookmark, which is the page that we're currently on, we use target, which is the link's destination. So really fun. So let's go into this uh, buying guide here and see what else is here. So another really handy thing, and this is really handy if you're a student doing research and you need to save um, snippets of particular research in order to footnote it later on, or you're just saving information because you're just researching whatever. Um, you can just simply highlight text that you want to save, right click on it, go down to the extension again, and you'll see that there is add note. And so when you do add note, we'll go back to DocuLife again, and you'll see that it instantly creates a note widget with all that stuff in it. And then you can modify this. We'll open this up. All right, so then we'll highlight this and we'll open our, our rich <clears throat> editor here, and we can change the font to like something a little bit classier like Georgia. We can change the size. We'll bump that up to 18. And perhaps there is uh, some part of this that we want to highlight. Um, let's see, a couple of last, let's just highlight this part here. So let's go to the highlighter. We'll get some colors to highlight with, and you can just do that. Or you can add your own color as well. So now if we um, update the note, we can then modify. Uh, See, make this a little bit wider. 
there you go. So you can read most of this in one view. And if we went three wide, you probably see the whole thing. There we go. Now you can see the entire note without even having to click into it. It's got that highlighted portion. It's got the new font that we applied. So really cool, right? So the last one of the last things we could do here, let's see, we could save this particular image as well. So let's save this image here. So we're going to save image into my faves. Again, let's go back and take a look. You should see it pop in here in a second. We can take a look at this note on mobile too while that's loading in here. So we'll, uh, we'll just accept that. All right. And we'll refresh this page here. There we go. There is the buying guide widget that came in. And the note. Really cool, right? So we did save that image. I'm wondering where that is. It, if it's a CSS image, sometimes it doesn't like those because it can't grab it per se. Uh, so let me grab, like, let me try one of these guys here. Let me save this image to my faves. Let's go back. It depends kind of how that image is being called. If it's being called as a background to a CSS div, I know I was getting a little technical, it's a little bit harder to grab versus just using it as an image tag on the page itself. Um, let's see if we can save a video as well. So let's see if this page has any videos on here. Let's go to this review here. Here's a video right here. Awesome. All right. So if we go to this page, we can save this video here into my faves. The hard thing with YouTube is that when you right click on a YouTube video, they have their own proprietary menu. But if you go to the actual page itself and click anywhere on this page, except for this video, because again, if you click on this, you're going to get that same proprietary menu. But if you click down here under the title, you can definitely add that save the video to your favorites. So let's go back here and see uh, what's happening. All right, here's that video coming in. If we open that up again, there it is. Really cool, right? Awesome. All right, so then let's take also a look and see what uh, we're doing on mobile here as well. <clears throat> Refresh this page. So it's kind of like your email program or any other uh, type of application. If you pull down to refresh, It'll update uh, what you've done on desktop into the mobile application. So as we scroll down here, and here's this video. And again, if you tap this, it'll play it uh, within the platform, within the application, without going to the actual YouTube page. So really cool, right? Now we've got this video handy on the go. So really great stuff here. Um, one thing I also want to mention here is that while you're out on Binder Overview, and we'll look at this on desktop as well, there is a conversation summary here at the top. So every object on DocuLife can have its own um, comment. So if we click on any of these photos, you'll see that there is a comment area here. And if we, uh, even if we click on uh, this bookmark here, oops, we click on the URL of the bookmark. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the title of the bookmark, you can have a conversation here. So you can have a conversation on any specific object, even on this note right here, if we open this note up, you'll see it has its own com dedicated conversation panel. So you could have a lot of conversations going on DocuLife at the same time so that we've uh, summarized everything in a really handy uh, conversation tab. So right here, I made a comment right on this My Faves uh, binder. So what it does is it puts the conversation in the middle of the page. So you can instantly reply down here on the bottom. And it shows you the exact um, object that we're discussing over here on the right hand side. So you have reference about what the conversation is happening about. So if we uh, put this in here, you'll see that this here has a great sunset comment. And the object that we're discussing is right here. And you can also like it uh, right on the spot as well. Um, you can uh, print it or download it. And then over here, we've got uh, the meta information as well. 
So every conversation you have throughout DocuLife is summarized on this conversations tab. And on mobile, we have this as well. So if you look down at the toolbar on mobile, you'll see that we've got this conversation chat bubble on the left-hand side. And if we go there, you'll see that it has all those uh, conversations here already. Um, so here we've got that my faves conversation, and we've got the one about the uh, photo as well, great sunset. And then we've got some conversations happening in the welcome binder. So you can even send us a message there as well. So everything is centrally located as well. And we can just go back to home there. And so you have access to all your conversations on the app as well as on the desktop app. So if you're out and about and someone needs to know something or you just want to check out what someone said about some content that you have in your DocuLife account, you can do so uh, you know, while you're waiting for the train or um, you know, sitting down in a cafe. You can have a conversation right in DocuLife and get things done on the go. So really handy. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's presentation uh, of the getting started with DocuLife. I gave you a lot of great information to get you going really quickly. Um, do join us at 11 a.m. next week for going beyond the basics. We'll, we'll cover off on binder settings, contributor roles. We'll deep, do a deep dive into those. We'll talk about tagging and then also cover off on import email as well. So really helpful stuff. So again, stay tuned next Tuesday. Uh, just check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash team DocuLife. And we have all of our webinars listed there on the events tab. Also check out our YouTube channel. A lot of helpful content there as well. Um, and really invite you back next week. Thanks so much for watching.